and I'll be in the background, everyone, if you if you need something from me there mm -hmm. as you get going. <clears throat> the live button's up. <clears throat> and I'll start recording. Okay, welcome everyone. We're just waiting a moment to get started here. Those of you on YouTube, welcome to CCTV. And we're just letting our audience in here now on Zoom. Let me see everybody coming in now. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar today, the Friday webinar. I'm Derek Auger. I'm the Executive Director with Conservatory Canada. Thanks for joining us here at 12 noon Eastern every Friday. And I just got a short introduction here I'm going to do before I turn things over to our panelists today, George and Andrew. Um, welcome. We're also simulcasting on YouTube on our new CCTV, Conservatory Canada TV YouTube channel. I'll put links to this in the chat box so you can bookmark it. Thanks to those of you who have registered for the webinar and here live within Zoom. Um, that's your way to interact with us and ask questions. If you have any questions today, throw those in the Q&A box. You can also chat with me on the side in the chat box. I'll be monitoring that in case anyone has any questions about Conservatory Canada along the way. So we no longer send out replay links. That's what the YouTube channel is there for. You can find this webinar almost right after it concludes on the YouTube channel. And eventually we'll have our own playlist within the YouTube channel called uh, webinars for Superscore that feature George and often, if not usually, Andrew. So a little bit, I think a couple of you I see our regular audience here joining. Just a quick update uh, from us about our database migration, the new teacher and student portals that we launched about 10 days or so ago. I know everyone should have received as of yesterday their activation link, and I know a number of you probably haven't. And so you go in and you're trying the, 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 the new login page that you can access from our website and things aren't quite working for some of you. We have a support line. Just email us, email Deborah at conservatorycanada.ca or office admin at conservatorycanada.ca and she'll send you over to our support team there that can get you hooked up into the new portal where you can eventually, you'll be able to see all of your students, their registrations, <clears throat> their old academic records and that kind of thing. Thanks for your patience during this time. And we're still continuing on with exams in the meantime. And of course, we're very happy with our new digital badge program. Uh, I would encourage anyone that wants to know more about digital badges to check that out either on our website or on the YouTube channel. Uh, it's an exciting new offering here, I think, for everyone. And everyone's going to be interested to see about those assessments that are more like a music festival, more like a virtual music festival assessment rather than a full certificate exam, which, of course, we still offer. So I'd encourage you to check those out. I'll put links to those in the chat box in case I've piqued anyone's curiosity. And next week on the Friday webinar, we're going to have Eleanor Gummer and Cecile de Rosier join us for the first time this season, talking about women composers and performance practice. And I'm not sure exactly their topic this time, but they're going to take us through all sorts of new music that's being rediscovered or discovered for the first time, music that was originally suppressed or forgotten. Uh, Eleanor specifically is in the process of publishing a lot of this music, so it's very exciting. And Cecile adds a lot of wonderful commentary with live demonstrations from both of their instruments, talking about performance practice of the period, and again, just featuring music by women composers. So I'd urge you to check that out next Friday on the 7th. Uh, those of us in Canada would like just to acknowledge that today is Truth and Reconciliation Day, and for whatever that means to us, it's a national holiday. Uh, it's part of a process that we're going through here in Canada to that international audience, and just know that we're thinking about this today. It's at the front of our minds as, as most of the nation has a holiday to, to celebrate and think and dwell on those subjects. So I'm going to turn this over to George from Time Warp Technologies, Andrew Harbridge, one of our CC examiners from Andrew Harbridge Publishing, and they're going to talk to us about their latest um, innovations and things that they're working on in the SuperScore app. And they'll talk about SuperScore app as well. If anyone has any questions specifically for them, especially technical ones, throw them in the Q&A and they'll stop at some point to answer those. So George and Andrew, thanks for being here on CCTV and welcome to the webinar. I'll hand things over to you at this point. Well, thank you very much, uh, Derek. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, my name is George Litterst. Um, I've had a, a long-standing relationship from the United States with Conservatory Canada. Conservatory Canada adopted 
um, Internet MIDI as a facilitating technology for connecting pianos together over the Internet uh, and use that to pioneer the e-exam system um, way back in 2008. And so that's how fa far back our relationship goes. But I'm representing Time Warp Technologies. You can find us on the web at timewarptech.com. We're the producers of SuperScore, which we're going to be showing today. Um, Classroom Maestro, Internet MIDI, and Home Concert Extreme. And I'm especially delighted to be here with Andrew Harbridge, uh, a publisher in SuperScore. And what else are you, Andrew? <laughs> uh, good morning, ev everyone, or good afternoon now. Uh, it's great to be here as well. And as Derek mentioned, I'm one of the examiners with Conservatory Canada. And I've been uh, examining with CONCAN since 2003, and uh, I've been an, an e-examiner from near the beginning as well. Also, you may um, have purchased one of my technique books. Uh, I have a series that goes with the contemporary idioms and the classical books, which now run up to grade eight with all the requirements for the classical music exams. So uh, just thrilled to be here today and show off um, what we've got to help you out with your exams and your students. So we have a lot to cover today, and I want to just give you a very quick overview. We are using SuperScore, uh, which is a free app on the iPad, and inside the app one can pr um, purchase albums, individual pieces, theory, ear training techniques, sight reading material, a lot of different things. And we're going to be talking about the ways in which you can use the embedded technologies productively in your lessons, whether they're in person or online, but especially focus on what happens between the lessons. There's so much that you are communicating with your students upon uh, during the lesson, but then they're responsible for the other six days of the week uh, to implement what you've worked out with them during the lesson. And when you can send them home with very powerful tools that carry those um, messages in a multi-dimensional way uh, into their practice time, uh, it's, the results are extraordinarily powerful. And both Andrew and I use uh, the technologies we're showing today in our own teaching and have seen the, the benefits. And we'll be talking about that. At the very end, we will have some door prizes. Andrew's gonna give away a few um, of his SuperScore publications. So if you are still with us at the very end, uh, you'll have a chance to participate in that. Mm -hmm. To start with, we'd like to give you a little bird's eye view into both of our studios. Here's a picture of a student who's taking a lesson in my own studio, playing on an acoustic grand piano. Mine happens to be MIDI capable, which means it can connect wirelessly to the iPad. But even without that, and connectivity, uh, the iPad is uh, very helpful in the lessons as you are going to see. Um, here's an image of a student um, playing in Andrew's studio on a digital instrument. Uh, Andrew, what's going on here? Well, this is Jason and uh, he uh, just recently finished his grade 10 exam and he used SuperScore a great deal. And it was such a great help to him to um, catch any wrong notes uh, between the lessons. And it saved us a lot of time to work on uh, things like interpretation and any technical difficulties. Uh, this is Jerry. He's um, eight years old and he is nearly finished his grade eight exam. And he's been enjoying using the um, Essentials 8 album and um, <clears throat> he's been able to take advantage of uh, a small hand score I wrote for uh, the waltz in A flat major by Brahms. And um, uh, he's going to use that piece on an exam shortly. Uh, I think you did a rough calculation, George, of how much time they spend in lessons and how much, uh, <laughs> you know, how much students are on their own. Do you remember any of those figures? Well, um, you can work out, you know, how many hours uh, there are uh, of lesson time in the course of a year. 
depending upon whether you're uh, teaching hour lessons or half hour or something in between, and, and maybe you're only teaching 36 or 40 weeks of the year, boy, it's a very few number of hours. But then if you're lucky enough to have a student practicing, let's say, an, an hour a day, well, multiply that number by six or seven, and that's how many hours the student's going to be spending at home uh, without your assistance. And so uh, it's quite a bit more time that the student is really the student's own teacher. And uh, of course, you want the student to be able to literally take you home. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of my adult students, Colleen. And uh, we both have copies of SuperScore. And it saves so much confusion uh, pointing out, you know, where are we? Um, we've got matching scores. And um, uh, she's able to uh, pick up the correct notes on her own very easily between the classes. And she's just thrilled with SuperScore. And uh, she's also uh, submitting for the badge program that we've just started. Um, here are two students of mine. Um, photo was taken in their home by their parents. Um, this was early in the pandemic. They were doing online lessons with me for the very first time. You can see the camera off to the side with the computer. Um, and they were both working from a very small iPad. Uh, they were at the early stages of learning how to read music. And as we'll be showing you, you can make the music as large as needed uh, in SuperScore. And so right now the music is at a fairly large size. The only one system is visible on the screen. And um, these boys are very cooperative with each other. And in this image, you can see the younger one is turning pages on the iPad for the older one. Uh, you never know what you're gonna see with your students in lessons. Um, and if you wanna go a little closer look at what's going on, this student of mine did show up in his online lesson with a live mouse running around inside his clothing. Um, so we're dealing with, um, with real kids, real situations um, here. So what I'd like to do at this point is to switch my screen sharing over to the iPad and just start to dig into repertoire uh, right from the beginning. One of the things that uh, we want to emphasize is that we have a lot of mainstream repertoire as well as uh, contemporary repertoire that's available in SuperScore and um, no lack of attractive music to keep your students engaged. So we're gonna start with just a very quick overview of some simple music into complex music. Um, an example here is from the all-in-one book B of Piano Kids published by One Eye, uh, Eleanor Gummer and her daughter, um, Marie. Uh, in their publication, you see every single page as it appears in print. And sometimes there's pencil activities that go along with these pages and you can, um, work them out with a stylus or with your finger in SuperScore. The piece that I'm showing you here on the screen happens to be a rather versatile one, which you could either do uh, two students each playing one hand or one student playing the whole piece. But every uh, piece from the book is then produced as a SuperScore piece, uh, which has playback and in many cases backing tracks. And I'll just give you a little taste of how attractive the music can be. I'm sure you know what the rest of it sounds like. Um, so that is when the saints go marching in. If the student is still in the really the early uh, days of um, discrimination between lines and spaces, the music can be made as large as needed to, to help facilitate the reading. And when the student's eye can process more information at a time, the music can be made smaller. Uh, we'll talk more. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, we'll talk more about the backing tracks a little later on. What were you going to say, Andrew? I was just going to say, uh, students may not be able to follow the tracks immediately. And in learn mode, the background music will wait for the student to play the right notes. Absolutely. And we'll show some examples of that uh, as we go. So here's another um, series. This is from Cyber Conservatory, a publishing venture of Paul Sheftel and myself. Uh, it includes a 
set of albums called Folk Songs from Planet Earth, nine levels of music. Uh, each one of these levels has got quite a rigorous progressive structure to it. I won't go into those issues in detail, but for the purpose of the example I'm going to show you, the music in level six especially focuses on the compound meter of six, eight time. And I'm one of these teachers who teaches six, eight, not as six beats per, per bar, but as two pulses per measure. And um, that, that the beat is effectively given to a dotted quarter note. So one of the students that you saw that was uh, pictured in one of the images a few moments ago has been working through this album. It took him a few weeks to be able to solidly answer the weekly question, what is the time signature, 6-8? How many beats are there per measure? <laughs> and after playing piece after piece in 6-8 time, he finally got the feeling that, yeah, there's, I can tap along, there's two pulses per bar. So forth. Nice little dissonances uh, in this particular one. So moving ahead, uh, here's a more advanced piece from somebody who's here with us today, Andrew. Tell us about uh, Sherry's song. Yeah, Sherry's song. Well, my wife's name is Sherry, and uh, I I wrote this song for her, and uh, I've written songs also for my uh, two daughters. But uh, this is one of uh, my more popular pieces. It has sort of a pop sound to it. And you'll notice there's quite a bit of syncopation in there. And this is one where uh, writing on the score comes in very handy. We'll write in the counting, uh, especially in a bar like measure seven, with all that syncopation. It's just very handy to be able to write the one and two and three end. Uh, perhaps, George, you can hit play and uh, people can enjoy the contemporary sound of this. Here's a page turn in process. You can move your eyes on the next page whenever it's convenient. This piece is already in Conservatory Canada's syllabus, uh, the contemporary syllabus. So like all of the other music in SuperScore, you can change the size. Uh, if you were to rotate the iPad to um, portrait, it would look a little bit more like a traditional printed score. Uh, today, to maximize our viewing in Zoom, I'm gonna be showing things in landscape, but you can use the iPad in, in either way. And yet the music is publication quality, even though the score has been totally reformatted literally re-engraved on the fly to publication uh, specifications. And in a case of this piece, one of the nice things is, of course, the student can take home the sound of the piece as well as the visual representation of what the student is supposed to play. And not only that, in this particular case, the student is taking home the composer's performance of the work, which is really right, you know, amazingly remarkable. What would we give to be able to buy a Mozart sonata with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's actual performance in it? Well, we're not gonna have that opportunity, but with the composers of the 21st century, we do uh, in SuperScore and it's pretty neat. You've got opportunities to turn off the playback of one hand or another. You could practice the piece as much as you wanted playing one hand while the composer himself in this case plays the other hand and you could choose to do it at any tempo uh, that you wish for practice purposes. And everything I've published, which I th think is well over 300 pieces, I've played all of them. Uh, might I mention, I don't know if you're going to mention this later, the little loop mode comes in very handy with that measure, with all that syncopation. Yes. So um, if you were to play along with the um, actual embedded performance, for example, uh, you could tap this little loop button in the lower right area. You could set up a loop. Let's say I'll make this the starting point. Uh, I'm doing a long press. I'm making this the ending point. 
You could listen to um, one bar, for instance, right here, and then you could join in in the next measure and match the um, performer's syncopation. And then it will do it again. So that's a, a wonderful practice uh, tool that can be employed. Um, while we're on the subject of composer performances, I'd like to show one from Dennis Alexander at a little higher level, published by Alfred in this album called Just For You, Volume 4. And watch the tempo indication in the lower right corner. It's always going to say 100% because I haven't fiddled with the tempo here. But the beats per minute are going to fluctuate because this is the way the performer or the composer performs this particular piece. And, you know, to um, listen to a phrase or a section, count along with the playback take breaths where the performance is essentially taking a breath, learn to breathe with the composer. Uh, it's wonderful opportunities for learning the interpretation and, um, and getting a sense of, you know, what, what does it mean to play with rubato and, and, and do so in a way that's, that works and makes sense. So let's uh, delve into something of a more classical nature. We're focusing on just a little quick overview of attractive repertoire. Um, Andrew, you were telling me this is one of the most uh, heavily played classical pieces that you've seen on uh, YouTube. That's right. I had no idea how popular Eric Satie was, um, but uh, his recordings of his works are in the millions. And uh, I put a nice little video of this piece up and 15,000 uh, listens in just a couple months, which I thought was pretty good. Um, uh, this one's very expressive as well, and it's a uh, super score captures exactly how I played it. Also, this has a very nice, yeah, go ahead. This has a very nice inspirational video. If you see the video clip at the top. In the upper right corner. Yep. You may want to scrub through a little bit. So when you buy the score, you get this in it. just match so well with this piece. So that's great. So we have not only wonderful pieces here, but often um, a multi-dimensional presentation of them. In this case, some written commentary, historical photo, and um, a nice conceptual video that yep. expresses some of the feelings behind the music. Yeah, the PDF you showed a moment ago um, uh, has some very interesting details about Satie. And as you know, Conservatory Canada teachers, uh, the students are required to know something about the composers. And you've got uh, your research right here. Absolutely. So um, I think I've got things oddly a little bit out of order here. Let me um, jump ahead for a moment. We'll come back to this. Oh, I know why, because we were going to go to the library. So before we talk about uh, this album called Merry and Mellow, one of the things that both Andrew and I have um, experienced with our students and SuperScore is the um, element of discovery. So many SuperScore albums actually consists of a large number of works. I'm going to go down to this one from Harbridge Publishing House called The Central Repertoire for Piano. Andrew, how many pieces are there in this album? Uh, there are 43 pieces. So I had a student who's um, playing at two levels higher than this particular album, but wanted this student to be 
achieving greater fluency in her playing. And so while she's really pushing herself to achieve um, the more difficult pieces, I want her to just every week be going through some things at a little easier level that she could be totally in charge of. And I found it was really wonderful to just be able to say, I want you to choose three pieces out of this album. She would go about listening to them. She'd choose the ones that she wanted to play. And that element of choice has been um, uh, very nice. I think you I wanted think, to show us a little bit of former friends. Yes. And this album, I believe, has a good mix of eras as well. And this is a beautiful piece by Bartok. I wonder if we could hear the end of it and how expressive it is. And you get superior sound with this. George, you've sampled your grand piano and put it in SuperScore. Yeah, we have a virtual piano that's embedded in SuperScore. That's actually, it's not, I have sampled my piano, but it, that's not, that was not the one we used. It's a nine foot concert grand. Oh. And um, it's, um, it's highly detailed. It gets quite bright at the loudest. Uh, dynamic levels. It's very round and rich at the lower volume levels. And it includes um, incremental pedaling response as well as sympathetic string resonance. So if you're just listening to the performances in SuperScore, and you might want to plug into good speakers or uh, headphones, uh, the sound is really quite remarkable. But all of these pieces can be played through MIDI output. And so if you have a digital piano, or even an acoustic piano with MIDI playback, like a Yamaha Disclavier or Steinway Spirio, the performance can take place right there in your instrument and will have the um, musical properties of that instrument. I should mention with all these albums, you get uh, composer biogra biographies included. That's right, uh, from, at least from your um, Harbridge Publishing for sure, and many of the others as well. Um, I often, We'll have a student purchase an entire album from the Christopher Norton Connections. These albums also come with a large number of pieces, and um, we usually don't have the time to work through every single one because there are so many. But the idea of giving the student choice uh, has been a wonderful thing. And so let's hear from level three, a little bit of white sand. I think I'll zoom in on this for you. It has some nice backing tracks. And what I find so remarkable about the pieces of this nature, very contemporary with backing tracks, when there's syncopation in the music, and it's done really well as all of Christopher Norton's materials are, uh, the syncopation sounds so natural and fluid. Um, whereas if one tries to come to this from the point of view of, well, I gotta mathematically figure out where to place these notes and count out every eighth note in the measure, you start off with a rather um, rough and rigid uh, concept about timing. And uh, this ability just to listen, absorb, imitate, and, in somehow incorporate that into your more mathematical uh, understanding of how counting works and the length of the notes in every measure. Um, I find that my students learn the material much more quickly and they end up playing it a lot better. And those backing tracks really get you into a groove. They do such a better job than a traditional metronome, which doesn't have a musical context to it. Here, there's a definitely a musical context but if you wished, you could turn off the playback of individual instruments and um, customize uh, what your experience is going to be. Okay, well, let's go back to this custom collection that I made for our presentation today. Um, 
and I was going to show you um, the markup feature of SuperScore, and I thought this album called Mary and Mellow would be a good one as an example. It's a collection of pattern pieces by Paul Sheftel. And once you get the idea of the pattern, you can play the piece. And pattern pieces of this nature are often pieces that can give a student at a fairly low reading level the opportunity to play something that's far more impressive and interesting than you might have guessed. And to be able to start off by going into markup mode and saying, well, let's you know analyze what's going on here. Um, there's something here in the um, right hand that seems to be a bit of a pattern. We can change and make that our favorite color. Um, do we see anything like that anywhere else? And you know, yes, we do. I mean, we see that here, we see it there, uh, et cetera. And to have the student go through and mark things up, find these patterns, and then discover uh, when done that, and I'm gonna hide my markups here, that the whole piece is really derived of these patterns. I'm going to skip the repeat and show you what happens at the end and how the end is an outgrowth of the beginning. A very cool ending, and it's the same notes, same hand positions and fingerings that were used uh, earlier on. Um, and this, of course, piece has um, Paul's inimitable um, humor. It's called the stocking. Why, as it says down here, uh, because the piece um, ends with a little run. So anyway, that's Paul Sheftel for you. <laughs> um, Andrew, we were going to... Um, talk a little bit more about this idea of inspirational videos. Yes, uh, this one, it's not just inspirational. Uh, it shows me performing, but it um, also has some history. So you can see where Handel's uh, lived and um, what his living room looked like, that sort of thing. At, this is a grade 10 piece I've had it approved um, about three times, I believe, and uh, the students really enjoy hearing this one. I might mention it, uh, tempo changes are no problem. You can see we've got 84, and then a little further in, we've got 108. And there's, uh, this is all uh, part of the performance. So if we tap on the video button, we get over to the video. And uh, why don't I just scrub a little bit here? Uh, at the beginning, you're playing. And then we're going to um, start to see a little bit about Mr. Handel. You can get to know what he looks like. You can see this can really be played. <laughs> really love this place, uh, piece. Here's where Handel was born. So a lot of good stuff packed into um, the, um, the SuperScore file. Mm -hmm. This one's, that one's also terrific to play at a, you set your uh, tempo at 50% and play along. And then you gradually increase the speed, and uh, it helps the student learn a lot quicker, I think. And it's a very cool piece, uh, for sure. Well, let's talk about duets. Um, we all work with duets uh, with our students. It's a way for us as teachers to um, establish the sense of pulse, sitting next to the student as the student plays. This publication from Alfred, a Masterwork Classic Duets Level 1, has got um, a number of um, nice student and teacher duets. The teacher part obviously is the secondo here. I should point out that if you go to the parts menu, 
you can turn off the display of either part. So if the student's at home practicing away, the student doesn't need to see the teacher part uh, and taking up room on the um, uh, iPad screen. They can just focus on their own part but they also have something that they can play along with uh, at home as they're learning their part and do so at any tempo. And quite clearly, the teacher part with these intense chords, uh, you know, really is the underlying motivating part of uh, the piece, uh, causing it to be rather dramatic in places. And the students at home playing without that part, uh, it's a little harder to sort of get into that frame of, of musical thinking. But when you've got the accompaniment always with you, you can have a different learning experience with the music. Mm -hmm. Very like encouraging and motivating. Absolutely. I'd like to show one from Carol Matt's piano. It's a duet. Uh, it's the Saint-Saëns, uh, the swan from the Carnival of the Animals. Uh, Carol does a wonderful job of writing pieces that uh, have two equal student parts. And I'm going to just jump around here and make a couple of comments. So it's very beautiful. Uh, we move on to a later part of the piece. Now the secondo gets the melody. And if we move to the end of the piece, we get to a situation where both parts and all four hands need to feel like they're being directed by a single brain. So as beautiful as this piece is to play and to do it as a duet, um, putting it together without actually having your duet partner there at all times as you're playing your part uh, is a hard thing to do. And here with SuperScore, your duet partner, whether present or absent, is always going to be there. You have uh, play along possibilities with SuperScore. Now, duet accompaniments are just one kind of uh, play along experience. Uh, we'd like to show something that's a little bit more advanced. Um, Boozy and Hawks publishes a lot of Christopher Norton's music, and this is a republication um, with a new slant on it of an older publication of Chris's, The Essential Guide to Latin Styles. Uh, in this, um, like with all of his albums, there's just a gazillion pieces, but with each one, he's got quite a detailed commentary as to what it is that um, describes the character of it, in this case, a rumba. And we'll hear a little bit of uh, rumba number one. So forth. It's like a wonderful set of mini etudes in Latin styles, uh, broad ranging styles um, here. And um, those accompaniments are really what uh, give you kind of guardrails on your learning experience and figuring out, well, how do I fit my part in and how do I express it? And of course, it makes it um, so much fun to be able to, to work in these ways. This one I'm rather proud of. Uh, if we can go into the PDF a little bit. 
students may not know a lot about this composer, but we've got his little biography here. And just to show you um, that we research these scores very well, this is a publication by Haslinger. And uh, so the composer himself made this score, and this was the score we went by to produce the super score version. So uh, wherever possible, we go back and consult the original scores. Perhaps we could have a little listen to the beginning. It's a level four, grade four classical piece. And with this one, we have a history video with the piece playing in the background. I'll just scrub through this one a little bit. Yeah, where where he lived, what the city looks like, uh, the uh, a bit about the printing press and the copper plates he used. Haslinger had his own company that employed about 50 people. So what should be coming out of this uh, part of the presentation is, is that, you know, the experience of a piece of music is really a multi-dimensional thing. It's something that involves our eyes gathering information and involves our intellect understanding what that information is. It involves understanding a, a context, which involves the history. It involves our ear and listening and involves decision makings about uh, what to uh, put forward in our playing, how to express the music. Uh, there's just so much that's remarkable about music performance that's, you know, just more than figuring out how to push the keys down. And with albums like this in Superscore, you really get immersed into a multidimensional experience right from the get-go. Uh, I'd like to show you very briefly another such example. This one was published by me by Time Warp Technologies. Um, this is a gentleman who published in 1779, 12 country dances for harpsichord, Ignatius Sancho. He was born into slavery in the 1720s. And there's you know, quite a, a history of that and how he got out of slavery and became a property owner and uh, the first African-American to vote in a parliamentary election. Uh, a lot of curious things. Um, and we do provide the original scores that he self-published. He didn't do the engraving, but he was responsible for paying for them. And of course, if you wanted to know, well, what would an ur text be like? And of course, originally it would be played on a harpsichord. Well, what should the experience be in like a modern context? So here's a bit of Mungo's Delight. Now, of course, to really be able to interpret the piece and do something interesting with it, you've got to make decisions about articulation, slurs, staccatos, and so forth. And um, I offer an edited version as well, performed on the piano. So again, a, um, a multi-dimensional approach and something an approach that is going to get involve the student into a deeper thinking process about uh, interpretation and um, and what to do. Now we've talked a little bit about um, composer performances. Uh, Christopher Fisher, um, head of the music department at the Ohio University, has published in the Piano Safari um, Company. Here's a little bit of Vals uh, of Melancholique. Very beautiful piece. Well, you might be wondering, um, well, how many of um, living composers do we actually have represented uh, in Superscore? And so we thought we'd just give you a quick little overview of them. Uh, on this particular card, you'd probably recognize immediately Paul Sheftel and Christopher Norton, uh, but there are quite a number of others here. And if we go down, to the next card, well, Dennis Alexander is quite well known. Well, there's Christopher Fisher, whom I just mentioned. Uh, Wynne Ann Rossi is published by Alfred. Uh, Lee Evans, well-known uh, jazz music educator. 
from uh, Red Leaf Piano Works in Canada, Martha Hill Duncan, Susan Grisdale, uh, Eleanor Gummer is represented here, Jenny Walker's from England, Andrew Harbridge, Ian Green, the Canadian composer, uh, Catherine Fisher from um, Piano Safari. Um, all of these are living composers who've done their own performances in SuperScore. And uh, the music is really quite uh, remarkable when you have that, um, um, those performances right there in the music itself. So I can, if I can mention, Lee Evans has some really fabulous arrangements that are in the contemporary syllabus. Uh, so if you're looking for some advanced material, well, his stuff, uh, we have lower grades as well, but some of the advanced stuff is just fantastic. Absolutely. So Andrew, I think in the interest of time, we should probably jump over to the topic of uh, exams and then to the extent we can come back to the other repertoire we were wanting to show. Sure. Um, so let's talk about using SuperScore in exams, competitions, and festivals. Again, times are changing. And I don't have any photos from exams in Conservatory Canada using the iPad, although we know that that's happened already. Um, I've got a few photos from a judged festival in North Carolina that took place this last year. And so the student who normally would need to pass in a printed score to the judge is passed in the iPad. And the judges are perfectly content with the idea of being able to read the music on the iPad, swipe the screen to turn pages. This was done um, at a time where people were concerned about the latest uh, variant of COVID. And so the student was actually in another room from the judge. And this would be maybe a scenario that's very like the um, Conservatory Canada long distance exams. Um, and you'd be able to see and hear the student through the computer screen, but the examiner's got the iPad right there. There's no reason why the iPad can't be used. Oftentimes in exam situations, everybody's concerned about, well, was this music uh, bought once and photographed many times? Uh, or is it a, you know, a, a fully paid for score? And you can't copy and give away scores out of super score. So you can always be confident that the scores are uh, legitimate. And Andrew and I have worked this summer on putting together um, a huge uh, database of 200, or, sorry, 2,500 exam worthy solo piano pieces that are uh, published in SuperScore and correlated them with examination systems around the world. So I'm going to show you uh, how you can find this. And these have all been graded to CONCAN standards. Yes, which will make your experience here uh, very useful. So uh, if you go to timewarptech.com, which is the home of Time Warp Technologies, and click on um, resources, go down to SuperScore resources, You'll find some webinars and some brief videos and various things. If right here you clicked on these words, Super Score Guide to Graded Piano Literature and Exam Repertoire, you'll get over to our database. There's a little disclaimer that this does not imply any endorsement by any particular exam system. But if you scroll down and click on exam systems, you'll see that we've looked into all of these systems from around the world. As Andrew has mentioned, we've uh, graded them to the leveling of Conservatory Canada, and it's on a scale of preparatory through grade 10. Some of the other exam systems do like a grade one to grade eight thing. Uh, there can be some little disagreements from one system to another on the actual grading. But uh, here we are looking at um, columns, piece, composer, arranger, if any, SuperScore publisher, the name of the album in SuperScore, and whether this particular piece has appeared on uh, a syllabus recently from any of these systems. And for example, this Capriccio here of um, Hosslinger, I'm sorry, of, of Hossler, <laughs> published by Harbridge Publishing House from the album Essential Repertoire for Piano Grade 5, that's in the Concan Classical Piano Grade 5 list. 
uh, this one here, which is Mississippi, uh, one Mississippi, two Mississippi by Martha Duncan Hill of Red Leaf Piano Works is part of an album called Rainy Days. And that's um, on the syllabus of Concan Contemporary Piano uh, Grade 4. It, it, there's a lot of Concan. <laughs> uh, there is. <laughs> so um, you can look down the list. The, the pieces are named in alphabetical order. And you can see in some cases, the other exams may have them a grade higher or grade lower. Um, but this is a great way to uh, figure out uh, what you've got in SuperScore and how it might plug into an exam, especially a CONCAN exam. Um, so and, we want you to be aware of, of that resource. And as far as I know, the e-examiners all have um, access to SuperScore. They do. So uh, they'll have no trouble uh, getting the, the music that your student is going to play and being able to follow along and, and make their comments appropriately. Okay, well, let's uh, take a little bit more to look at literature and then do um, the drawing before we get to the end of the hour here. So I'm going to go back to sharing my iPad. And Andrew, if you don't mind, I'm going to um, skip over a couple of things and um, quickly show. This is a terrific grade 10 piece. Um, um, something of seasonal nature. Um, so from Hal Leonard, um, more Christmas piano solos, level five. So will give you a sense of how rich the backing tracks can be. All those orchestrations are being produced by the virtual instruments that are inside of SuperScore. Um, I'd like to skip over actually to another seasonal piece um, of your arrangement because you've done something rather unique with the first Noel. Uh, yes, um, this would be a terrific piece to use in a recital or at a carol service because we have a movie that would uh, goes along with the performance. So I've made it in such a way that you don't have to exactly match it, but it is timed um, to fit with the piano performance. So you're getting a, a beautiful performance and a visual one as well. Go ahead and start this one. So if you wanted to project this um, video, you could play the musical, uh, perform along with it. And I think you're supposed to come in when you see the bird. Yes, when you see the bird, then you would start the music. Of course, you would mute the performance in this uh, for the recital, but it gives you a good idea of where it is. Beautiful 4K pictures in here. so great at capturing all the rubato I put in here as well. This would be great as an offertory in a church service as well. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's, I mean, it's a, a, a terrific um, uh, arrangement for sure. So I think at this point, we should probably move on to uh, questions as well as the drawing. Um, oh. Can I mention one more thing, though? Sure. Uh, the way uh, I've been working is to give you a complete package for what you would need to prepare a student, say, for a grade four exam. I've got the Essential Repertoire album with pieces that will match up with uh, CONCAN grade four syllabus. And uh, you get all these features like history, uh, 
bios. Uh, can and I, then can I, that, pa can I pause yeah. you for just a second? Because yeah. uh, what you're starting to talk about, I think is answering Wendy's question here. Oh. Uh, she says, it seems that Conservatory Canada, there's so many peace options on the accepted pop stream list and the student has to purchase a lot of books to allow them an opportunity to play them. Has CC considered publishing a collection per grade? And uh, you're kind of getting into this area of having a collection per grade. So uh, let me just quickly scroll down to the repertoire that you've mentioned. Uh, you were talking about grade four, right? Yes. So here's your central repertoire for grade four. And we see Baroque, I see Telemann, I see classical from Mozart, I see contemporary from Harbridge. Um, a lot of Robert Schumann. Here. Robert Schumann, so we've got the Romantic era. And then you've got um, um, some ear training and skills uh, materials, right? That's right. We have expert ear, uh, which matches up exactly with ConCan's program. So uh, we've got this interactive uh, ear training test. So the student could just hear this, note, write down what they think the answer is, whether it's major or minor. You can pause it if you need more time. Minor triad. And George, if you go to learn mode, uh, the student can actually be required to play the answer. So I'm connected wirelessly to a little keyboard at my desk. SuperScore is gonna play the uh, test question. I'm the student, I'm misinterpreting, I'm thinking it's minor. I'm gonna play what I think the chord is. Oh, that didn't do anything. I'll try major. Ah, the cursor's moving. I got the answer. And, and then, yep. Yeah. Go ahead. I think I, we're about to say the same thing, that the uh, answer can be revealed. And so we got um, uh, item after item uh, here in this album of chord identifications, interval identifications, melody playbacks, and um, all that in one place. And in another place, there's technical stuff, isn't there not? Mm -hmm. There is. So these are an exact match for CONCAN. So, uh, but anybody from anywhere could use these. So you could go to the grade four super score technique book. If you look at the beginning, uh, the first PDF has, oh, uh, this is an interactive score. Well, they we can, can go back to along. the PDF. Yeah. So the PDF, uh, the I've got scale graphics, the groups of with the fingering are all colored. And these colors are matched in the um, the interactive scores. So if we go back to the interactive, you can see uh, the groups are colored according to the the, fit, the hand groups. Or if there's anything unusual, we uh, color those as well. They can play along, have perfect, uh, even uh, performances. Oh, uh, can we go back to the PDF one more time? Sure, just want to point out that you've colored the um, arpeggio hand positions where finger two is used as opposed to finger three and all of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can hear the... Um, uh, Which PDF yeah, did you want? Uh, let's go back to the main menu and other resources. So in here, I've got rhythm sight reading, lots of those, some sight reading examples and keyboard harmony <laughs> tests and examples they can try out, a place they can organize their whole exam. Uh, I've got the, uh, the tunes for naming intervals. Everything you need for a grade four exam is here. That's right. Um, so I guess uh, Wendy is commenting again here and is thinking that she would prefer to have like one big publication. That's every single thing that one might do um, in one publication. Um, I don't well, know that there's a need to do that when you can just put together a few well-chosen publications. But anyway, that's where, where things stand at the moment with uh, this capability. 
Yeah, um, I, Andrew, I made you that as a package. You could buy grade four, and you get your repertoire, the year and the, the technical book. But at this time, they're all separate. Okay, so um, we need to go before we run out of time over to the drawing that you were going to offer some free albums. Yes. So um, let me switch over to that. So the first five people to email me will get their choice from the Harbridge Publishing section of Superscore. And here is the email address to use. Andy Harbridge at <laughs> hotmail.com. My wife always calls me Andy. So I'm just going in here. Once again, Andy Harbridge at hotmail.com. So while those are coming in, and I know we're closing at this point, I'd like to encourage everybody to want more information about SuperScore to visit timewarptech.com. There's a lot of information about SuperScore there. Uh, all of the SuperScore albums are showcased on the Time Warp Technologies website. However, the only way to acquire them is inside the app itself. The app is a free download from the app store on the iPad and then purchases are made inside the app. So Derek, okay. thank you so much for um, inviting us here today. Yeah, that was a wonderful presentation, both of you, very professional. And I know we've all enjoyed it, walking through the SuperScore app and all the new, all of the new repertoire that's there, including the spreadsheet and everything is really awesome to see. Um, and I know Andrew's just waiting for his inbox to be flooded there so we can announce the winner. And in the meantime, maybe I'll just address Wendy's question a bit more because it's a really good one. And the one it's one that comes up often, you know, in terms of Conservatory Canada publishing new books. And it's something we struggle with. It takes a lot of money these days to do that. Uh, and and the, the big stumbling block we have is the, the sheer cost of it. Um, to enter these into SuperScore is much more cost efficient for Andrew and George to work on. For us to make hard copies of books, it's, it's up to $100 a page now to set a new book, which is really quite cost prohibitive. And so that's why we're in this world now of just downloading PDFs of one at a time or working within the app. I think that's sort of the way to go. Of course, we still publish our legacy publications. Our contemporary Canadian repertoire series is still there. And I hear your pain, though, about having to purchase so many books for students. I purchased a couple of myself from my library, two copies, and I let students borrow from those over time to kind of get around that a little bit. Um, but the SuperScore app, I just find, is a great way to, to work around this because then you can purchase all your repertoire there. The students can do whatever they want to within it and, and buy piece by piece where necessary. Yeah, when you want it, you've got it right there. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to waiting weeks for it to come in the mail. I've and only I had three. Say this, that, oh, um, only three have entered so far. So oh, there's two unclaimed prizes. Okay. Um, I'll just comment that I have observed that the publication prices in SuperScore are generally the same as print versions of the equivalent materials or a little bit less. I've never observed the reverse to be true. And so my guess is in the case of a family that can afford an iPad, uh, affording the publication shouldn't be uh, too much of a problem. And you get all this other stuff. So you're waiting for two more emails, Andrew? Yes, but uh, we can, in, I'll watch. Uh, I can't say the uh, say who won the first three prizes. So Melody, you won, and Lillian, and Carissa. Congratulations. I so presume we'll that Carissa is not the Carissa that's your daughter, right? No, that would be unfair. Differently too. <laughs> oh, uh, Marg has just won the fourth prize. I suggest uh, people pick the most expensive things out of Harbridge Publishing. <laughs> is there uh, one more? It has to go to your inbox. I see in our Q&A, Wendy's trying to send an email, but she's on a different device that's not able to send an email. Uh-oh. Uh, Samantha, you have won the fifth prize. Okay, Samantha. Congratulations. Toronto. Awesome. Well, George, Andrew, thanks so much. If anyone else has any questions, 
in the chat box, the Q&A, or you can raise your hand. If you raise your hand, we can bring you on live for a moment here. We have a couple of minutes, so we'll just wait a second to do that. I hope we can have both of you back at some point if you have other things or updates later in the year, or George, if you have other things, Andrew, you have other things in your publication house there that you want to promote through Conservatory Canada. We'll certainly have you back throughout the year. And then folks, like I mentioned, next Friday, we're going to have Eleanor Gummer, Cecile de Rosier here talking about new year, new pieces, new composers, and some of the latest publications that Eleanor was able to work on and start getting out there through One Eye Publications over the summer for new music by women composers. So hope you'll join us for that the Friday after. And then beyond that, I'll be announcing some more webinars. We have a bunch of people willing to come in and talking, talk about their research and that kind of thing over the next two months. So hope you can keep joining us. Again, check out CCTV YouTube channel for the replay for this. And anyone that didn't get to view today, we'll make sure you figure out where that is. So thanks everyone for joining us. George and Andrew, any last minute words or anything you've, you wanted to mention? Well, I appreciate the uh, invitation to come back again. Yeah. Love to. Uh, by my calculation, we covered 3.2% of what we could talk about in SuperScore. So awesome. <laughs> and so I was going to mention, I will take requests for repertoire. Uh, I'm open to that right now while awesome. we're making the albums bigger. And the expert year, I'm working on grade seven and eight right now. And that will get all fleshed out in this coming year, which will yeah. be really very exciting. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining. Hope you have a great weekend.